okay, we're finally in the home stretch. So now that we've constructed the three H3 group orbitals that are shown on the left, we now can just simply consult uh, the D3H character table uh, to, to generate the symmetries of the rest of the orbitals that are necessary. So we know that we have the 2s orbital and that's going to be a one prime symmetry. So simple fact there is that's uh, going to necessarily make the bonding and anti-bonding combination. So remember, all we're going to have to do is, is just take in phase and out of phase combinations of those two. So those will give us bonding and anti-bonding interactions. The uh, PZ orbital in this particular character table has A2 double prime symmetry. Um, so that is going to give us um, a non-bonding interaction. And then, of course, we have symmetry matches between the two group orbitals um, with PY and PZ. And we have to effectively do the same thing is in each case, we're going to do um, in phase and out of phase combinations to make um, bonding and anti-bonding orbitals. And then we can see what the whole thing looks like. So in the end, um, when you count, there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven uh, total orbitals that are gonna go into this molecular orbital diagram. We know that as a result of this, we're gonna get um, three bonding interactions. We should have three anti-bonding interactions, and then finally the, the non-bonding one, uh, which is shown at the bottom. So we're gonna have seven uh, total molecular orbitals, and then we can kind of see how well everything is, is gonna come together based on their energetics. So in this particular case, um, all of the symmetry match H3 group orbitals and boron atomic orbitals absolutely will interact energetically. So this can best be just, you know, depicted on a molecular orbital diagram. So what you're going to see here is down on the, on the bottom left is these are the boron um, atomic orbitals. On the right are the H3 group orbitals, and then in the center is obviously going to be the, the molecular orbital picture for borane itself. So let's just start energetically. So the um, hydrogen uh, group orbitals are going to have the same energies as the atomic orbitals on hydrogen. So those orbitals are, are here, and they all have. Um, minus 13.6 EVs of energy. Um, again, I separated them uh, simply because of the fact that um, the A1 prime is totally symmetric. E prime has a node. I separated them in energy a little bit, but it, it, it just makes the diagram a lot less congested. Then on the left side, A1 prime for the, two, so this is because of the 2s orbital that's on boron. And then these are, you know, the 2p um, x and 2py is here, and then obviously the 2pz is uh, the a2 prime or a2 double prime orbital that does not have a symmetry match. So um, in working through this, let's just start. So we know that um, we'll start with a1 and a a1 prime and a1 prime. So those will combine together, as we said, to make bonding and anti-bonding combinations and um, I don't have perfect amounts of room here, so these energetic offsets are not perfect, but it, the energy ordering is, is going to be correct here. Um, so there you have the in-phase um, combination would be here, the out-of-phase would be here, and that would constitute sigma and then sigma star. The next comes uh, the combination of the, of the E primes are going to come up here. And um, those will make bonding and anti-bonding combinations each. So 
you know, PX with E prime X and PY with E prime Y. And those in phase and out of phase combinations will give us um, bonding and antibonding uh, orbitals. And then, and then finally, as we said, the, uh, the A2 double prime is, is non bonding in this picture. And because it's non bonding, um, we also know that it has the character of the, uh, of the PZ atomic orbital from boron. So that empty orbital belongs exclusively to boron in this picture. So to kind of continue down this road, let's take a look at some of the, uh, some of the, the net characteristics of this. So this is sigma bonding, and then we have two sigma bonding interactions here. So that's effectively telling you that we expect there to be three different um, boron hydrogen bonds, which we know there are. So that's consistent with the Lewis structure. And then we know that, that um, this boron-based atomic orbital PZ is, is non-bonding, which also is, is suggestive of the fact that um, borane is electron deficient. And the boron atom itself, being a good Lewis acid, can actually accept electron density simply because of the fact that it has a um, LUMO in this particular case that is, is empty in an electron deficient structure. So then the corresponding antibonding orbitals are, are lying up where I'm showing them in um, A1 prime and, and E prime. And then if we look at the final shapes of all of the different MOs that we constructed, um, so the, the A1 prime is obviously totally symmetric and, and that's giving us uh, a, a completely in phase pattern. I put the E prime slightly higher in energy because the overlap is not as, uh, as strong as it is in the A1 prime, but there's another reason. If you look, there are going to be a pair of nodes that are singular. So there's one node there and there's another one right there. And the zero node pattern is going to be typically the lowest in energy. And then you have a one node um, pattern for the next highest in, in energy. To keep going then, um, as you can tell there, that's just the PZ orbital. Um, and the PZ orbital is non-bonding. And then finally, the, um, the antibonding combinations, which what I prefer to do in these cases is keep the atomic orbital on the central atom the same and then subtract from it the, um, the group orbital and you'll get these types of pictures. So when you, when you kind of see what I've done, you see now this has positive phase, those are all negative. Um, so that's the uh, that's the out of phase um, A1 prime uh, combination. And then um, notice now what what got created here is these structures now have more complex nodal patterns. So there's there's more nodes now in these uh, in these structures than you were seeing before. So if you if you sort of look, there's nodes actually like down the center in in all of these, then there's nodes there, um, and as well as having nodes in between um, those. So you can kind of see the nodal patterns get um, a little more complicated in these antibonding structures, but they, but they have numerous nodes, which is then suggestive of those are totally antibonding interactions. And that is, um, in summary, the entire MO uh, diagram energetically and pictorially represented uh, for boring. Um, thank you, and I hope you were able to stick with me and found this to be informative, and we'll see you next time.